Oh, hey out there, guys. It's uh, Sunday, and I've got an interested buyer in the Bronco here, so I'm just going over it and making sure everything is, you know, good, right? There's a couple things that's just bothering me. You know, I don't want to sell anybody. I don't want to sell somebody problems, right? Uh, I just I did the mass airflow sensor over the weekend. So it was Friday or Saturday, and it's still starting up with that high idle. So I, I I'm out of ideas there. That was the last thing. It still had the original mass airflow sensor in there, so I figured maybe that's why it's starting up high idle. And the weather's changed a bit, and it's still idling the same. It just had startup. Starts normal, then it goes up to 1500, then it drops down, idles normal. So I have no idea what's going on. And that's been going on for a while. It comes and goes, so I have no idea. Um, another thing that really bothers me was the wheel alignment issue. I got that all straightened out. So somebody was asking me, why am I putting more work into this if I'm going to sell it. Well, because I want it to go straight. I want to sell it to somebody. I want to make sure it goes straight. The alignment's good and everything. Uh, last thing is that issue that clunk in reverse. Put it in reverse, back up, hit the brakes and clunk. I can't figure it out. I replaced all the bushings. I checked all the bushings on the leak springs on the and uh, yesterday I was looking at the U-bolts, make sure the U-bolts are tight and everything. And I still, mm, I even changed out the motor, not the motor mount, the transmission mount, because Jimmy Johnson suggested I do that. And I go, heck, the transmission mount was 16 bucks, right? So I did that yesterday, and still I get that clunk. Haven't been able to figure that out. I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to pop the diff cover off the back and just see what it looks like. What am I looking for, right? Now here's one thing about this Detroit locker. It has play in it, okay? Because it engages the axles. So, it's got play in the dry shaft. Click, 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 click. It could have up to an eighth of a turn if you read the manual. Because the side gears have to engage, okay? It's a Detroit automatic locker. So it's got some play in it. And that's why they're not too comfortable on the street. Off-road, beautiful. It's on all the time. But on the highway, it's a little rough. So like right now, I'm turning the, the dry shaft. See the ring gear move? That's how much play is in the differential itself. So I'm using this bowl here because it was nice and clean and I want to reuse this gear oil. Oh, dang it, the gear oil is like, shit, what, eight bucks a quarter or something? Or more? Ah, I'm gonna make a mess, it never fails. Dang. Yeah, I was wondering if one of these berries could be bad. I mean, and the differential is sl sliding around there. Oh man, I ain't going nowhere. Pfft. Side to side. See, I don't see nothing wrong there. Hmm. What do you think, Jimmy Johnson? I know Jimmy Johnson's just rebuilding a 8.8. So let's check uh, differential operation, right? So, okay, guy, I want to test that differential out. And if you got the owner's manual, yeah. It's got a picture there, see? Ah, step one, step two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fortunately, it takes two people and it's just me, so uh, let's see what we can do here. Okay, this is a Detroit automatic locker, so it's got ratcheting gears inside the carrier there, so I should be able to hear it clicking. That's free right 
right there. Hear it ratcheting? Locked. Gotta do the other side. Locked. Free. Did you see anything? So now, these are really heavy duty, but I don't recommend these for a daily driver. Really harsh all that locking and unlocking. And that little play in the drive shaft kind of drives people nuts. Um, I've had it in the shop, and the guys are talking, hey man, your rear end's gonna blow up. You got all kinds of play in the drive shaft there. So your, your ring and pinion are going on. I go, no, it's, it's the Detroit locker. That's the way it is. The only thing I hear that goes wrong in these is that the spring will break, because there, there's, there's springs in there, okay? And side gears. Let's see, we got a picture here somewhere. There's a picture right there. Oh yeah. This thing is relatively new. The last one I had in here, heck, must have been about 10 years old. The only reason why I changed it was try to get a little of that uh, play out of the drive line there. These are seven, almost eight hundred dollars, but there's no airlines, there's no electrical, there's nothing to go wrong other than the spring breaking. The rest of your axle will probably fall apart before that thing blows up. So I guess that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to look for. Put everything back together. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you know. Something I missed. The oil's nice and clean. Uh, there's there's nothing on the bottom. There's a little. You know, all the teeth are there. I don't see any wear. Really weird wear marks or nothing. So we we'll put it back together. Put the oil back in. And what can I tell you? You know, I. If there was an issue with it, I'd have to fix that before I sold it because I wouldn't want to sell it <laughs> with a bad ring gear or something. That's just embarrassing. But uh, yeah, so I, I don't know what else to look for. So, uh, I wanted to reuse that gear oil, but man, I don't like the way it looks. I'm like, I don't think there should be anything wrong with it, but why is it so foamy? See it? What's going on here? Now this gear oil was changed um, after I rolled it over because all the oil shot out uh, one side. Since it was on its side, it was on the, like, the driver's side. All the oil came out of the axle seals on the driver's side. So It's got new oil in there, but why is it nasty looking? That phone's weird. I need like three or four quarts, damn it. Should I put this in? Oh, hey, I'm back from the auto parts store. This is what they had, right? They had a lot of this, Castrol. They had uh, the store brand, McGuard. They had a couple bottles of Lucas and a couple bottles of the Royal Purple. It's double the price of this stuff. But they only had a couple bottles of that. So they had a lot of, lot of this, so. <coughs> Why?
Why the 140? That's what uh, Ed recommended on the, on the the guy that did my gears and my axles. Yeah, it specs out 80, 90, I believe. But uh, Ed says, yeah, you will have your oil in there, you know. And then Ed, I've always used Valvoline because Ed told me, yeah, use Valvoline. So I was using the Valvoline synthetic, but they don't even have that at the store anymore. Very hard to find. And then like. Most of my trucks I use a mobile one. They didn't even have mobile one. So this is what it's getting. It's what it is, right? You know, I like using all the same brands, but it's very hard to do sometimes when it comes to gear oil. I could order some, but heck, I, I need this today. Oh well, hey out there guys. I'm done. Gotta clean up the oil mess now. Looky, I, I have that big bag of the kitty litter, right? So, um, like I said, I couldn't find nothing wrong with the rear end. I've checked the bushings, I checked the, what's clunking. I did go over some, I did some searches on the internet the other day, and some people have that problem, and it turns out to be their brake pads, right? Disc brakes the pad sits in there you know going forward they shift forward so when you back up and you put the brakes on they may they may kick back and make a noise but this this is this doesn't have disc brakes it has drum brakes it does have discs in the front now hmm it's really hard to tell where that sounds coming from feels like it's right under the seat that's why I changed the radius arm bushings and brackets and everything it's just nothing and the axle pivot bushings tie rods are tight everything's good I don't know that might be it though uh, gotta check the oil oil should be good I haven't gone anywhere and uh, this truck here has an aftermarket oil cooler kit on there. So it doesn't take the short uh, filter, it takes the long Ford filter. If you know what I mean, if you got one of these trucks, you usually have the short filter. This has the long filter on it. And what else? So I'm using Mobile One, Mobile One filters. Got a little coolant in the reservoir. Hmm, the battery, I got the warranty for the battery still. I got the wiring for the lights that were up here on the front for the light bar. I just stuffed them back in here behind the battery. Because uh, there's, you know, there's no lights no more. I took them off, put them on the other truck. Uh, what else? Put them horns on there. Cleaned it up a little yesterday, but I didn't want to get too crazy on the exterior because it's gonna it's gonna rain anyway. So uh, that rear differential takes over three quarts. It's got a rock crusher differential cover, so it's almost four. It's about three and three quarter quarts in that diff in the front. It just takes factory with uh, it's a limited slip, so just remember that. See what's it got? A 30 gallon tank or a 32 gallon tank? I forget. Oh, I gotta take this. I can take these stickers off because uh, yeah, I was gonna drive this out to the high desert Saturday to let the buyer take a look at it, but I called that off because that clunking sound just bugs me. I, so I figured, you know what, I'm going to put that transmission mod on there. You know, last resort, let's see what that does. That didn't do anything. So today, here I am taking the differential off. We'll take a look in there. Everything looks good. It's got the Pioneer sound system in there. And there's all kinds of adjustments on that radio. So it's, it's, it takes some tuning. It's got a three. It's got three-way crossover built into the head unit. 
it's got like six speaker connections in the back so you can run separates tweeters woofers and mid ranges I'm just running regular three ways so I'm not using the, the crossover system but I am using the it's got the typical uh, 16 van graphic equalizer it's got bass boost it's got uh, it's got automatic equalizer uh, thing you uh, plug in a little microphone that comes with a head unit and you put it in the driver's seat there and then you there's, this, there's a way to set it up press a certain buttons and you got to wait it's got to be quiet and it goes through making sounds right left front back and automatically tunes the receiver to your acoustics in your vehicle and it also has you know like what four other EQ settings you can use it's got high bass high pass filters low pass filters very complicated to get it tuned just right different music sounds different on it you know depending on what you're listening to it's like huh yesterday it sounded good but I was playing rock and roll you know so it all depends uh, it does go loud so this might be the last time you ever see this Bronco the guy was talking about coming down and get picking it up tomorrow so I just want to make sure it's ready to go uh, yeah been around all over in this truck there's a video out there somewhere on YouTube too uh, I've seen it years ago guy just has music music playing and and pictures of different Broncos right yeah my Broncos on there hey there's my truck I think the guy I think I contacted the guy and he's telling me yeah yeah you got a badass Bronco I put it in there hope you don't mind I go no I don't care so well that's it right we'll see what happens hopefully this deal goes through right Oh, I've had some comments out there like, oh, I bet you want to keep it. Yeah, I want to keep it. Sure. I'd like to keep all my trucks, you know. If I kept all my trucks right now, I'd have a Ranger. I'd have a two-wheel drive Ranger. I'd have this Bronco, and I'd have my Super Duty still. The Tacoma, hmm, not so attached to the Tacoma. But the Super Duty, <laughs> that truck was a blast with the V10. <laughs> Those big tires, big 40 tires on there. And this thing here, well, this thing goes anywhere. It keeps up with the best of the Jeeps, so I did at the time. Uh, yeah, my little Ranger, my little Ranger was fun just driving. It's, it was it had a Skyjacker kit on it, two-wheel drive with 35s, and I think I put 488 gears on there, and we just, fun just high-speed driving out in the desert. It wasn't a pre-runner or nothing. It was just, uh, it was just a fun truck. Manual. Yeah, you go out the sand washes and get some speed going, and oh yeah, and cruise along. But oh well, time marches on, right?